Hey, this is Metal Mike and welcome to the new Metal for Life column. Today I am going to show you a way of dressing up your riffs in some murky, monster, crazy uh, assault rhythm and, and treatments, basically. So check this out. This is a really interesting lesson because it's going to be less about being correct with the notes and more about how to hit a string and get some sort of a monster sound out of it. You're going to like it. Check it out. Okay, one of the coolest things about this riff is that it sounds heavy without tuning down. Like you see for this lesson, most of the Metal for Life lessons, my guitar is tuned to regular A440 standard E. And I always, even when I write riffs, I always think how much can I get aggression and the heaviness without having to tune down to B or something. It makes it, it, makes it more challenging for me to come up with great riffs. Let me show you how this riff breaks down. All right, let's check this out. I start off like this. I'm starting off with a regular um, E5 power chord. And then I move in into a B flat with another flat five here. And the pinky follows with an octave. So you have this sort of like a dissonant but I hit those strings pretty hard. So as you can see, sometimes when I hit this B flat, flat five chord, I'm not shy about allowing that bottom E string to ring in with it. See, that sounds pretty heavy. I move on to the next chord, which is right here, which is sort of like a G. G major. As you can see, that chord is also sort of, it's not really dissonant, but it's, a, it's like a murky sounding chord in some way. So you have so far. You play the same two chord changes again. And then you moving into the same G major chord and you're sliding it into like a G5 with a ninth on top, this white sort of like a progressive chord. So this little sliding section is So there's not a lot of movement because you're still basically in G, but that note that going from just adds grind. So remember, we're basically painting with our riffs. The first part happens again. And then you have a, we have a very cool ending. And I think of this ending basically ending on the F chord, but it goes basically like this. So what I'm doing to get the sound is that I'm keeping my, uh, my pinky on the F sharp and I'm playing my open E and A strings. I hit it while my open A strings are ringing. I slide this F sharp to F. So you have this. It sounds like a, like a pool of piranhas to me. So as I slide down from, um, from F sharp to F and I hammer on on the bottom bass note, I basically have an F octave. 
And remember, when I have this octave here, I'm still letting this A note ring. I'm basically, then I'm just finishing my last two hits are pretty much F power chord. Okay, the next riff is a really cool example of getting a lot of melody into um, your guitar part without making a lot of movements on your guitar. So you'll see that this next example is basically moving one finger, could be a pinky or your uh, first finger, within these few frets and you'll see you could get a lot of great stuff. So I'm going to show you a cool riff that sounds great fast and slow, so check it out. So this example is basically based on two note power chords and you have a bottom uh, E string which adds the, uh, the bottom part of this riff. So you got an eight note with a little of a 16 note gallop in there. But the, the chords themselves go like this. You have the E. You just basically move your third finger into the pinky. You could think of this as a like an E plus five or as a C chord. Now you move your first finger up into an F chord. Very simply for the next chord you move it back to the E. And right at the end of this whole riff you have this chord which you could be basically like a D a D sharp plus five or you could think of as a, as a B so you have a lot of harmonies but you really harmony implied but you're really just doing very very simple close movements <laughs> So you have this little chord progression that happens and then you interject a rhythm on your low E string. So you can add a little bit of a drama, a little fair by just hitting the last D sharp chord, if you want to call it this. So it gets a little more grimy, you put a little vibrato on it. And that's the riff. So remember, it's a good riff. A great riff is going to sound killer, whether it's fast or slow. And that should be a benchmark uh, for writing great guitar riffs if they work at different tempos. All right, to wrap up our column, I have one more. Uh, killer example for you and it's a it's a very rhythmic type of riff that uses a technique that may be slightly not as common as when metal guitarists write guitar riffs is that you have these open strings that get hammered on with your first finger and this creates this sort of like a grind <laughs> it's kind of like a very open sound that gets closed in very quickly. And um, the whole riff is an open string, hammer, open string, hammer, and those are just basically two sixteenth notes. So it's like one, two, one, two, right? It's very fast. And you have some movements, and in the middle of the riff you have a couple different chromatic things. So um, let me play for you. Check this out.
Okay, so to explain this riff for you, I must tell you that this riff was basically made up or born out of a sound. Uh, the sound was this. And I'm like, oh, that's killer, because it's got a really bouncy, nice rhythm to it. And you had this, you just had this grind in there. And it reminded me of a lot of Pantera and a little bit of Annihilator. They have this kind of like, kind of riff painting, as I call it. So I came up with this riff and I said, well, let me move this around and then let me throw something in there so it's not too predictable, right? Because anything great, when you see it all the time, you get the perception that it's not as great anymore. So check this out, this is how it breaks down. I already set up my pinky on an E note, so when I hit, you have the open E and an octave here. And I hammer on after the first note. So it's got a really cool, almost like a grindy, spongy feeling. So as I play this next phrase, I have an F, an open E, and a hammer on onto B flat. So again, you got this sort of like a... Right? It doesn't sound correctly, but it sounds good within the context. Next part is basically the same exact thing as the beginning. And now we're going to jump into some alternate chromatic thing. So it goes... Right? Sort of like an 80s thrash type of sound that's all alternate and palm muted. The third little part of the riff is same exact thing as the beginning. And I finish it off with the same idea between the F and the B flat. So now you have a lot of movement. Right, so as I finish this riff, I'm actually hitting, you know, an E, a C. So you shouldn't sound like a guitar, you should sound like a pool of piranhas. See you next time.